We saw a movie. We saw a movie. We saw a movie, and we're going to tell you all about it. This one departs a little from a lot of our action or monsters or sci-fi, all the things we often review. And it takes a look at a hero of mine from history, Golda Meir, in the movie Golda. So this is not a genre flick at all, which is kind of what we're known for here at Team mm -hmm. Death. We're being genre folks. I'm a monster kid. We watch monster movies, superhero flicks, things like that. So when you wanted to see this, when you proposed it, I'm like, okay, yeah, you know. It wasn't something you knew very much about. No, I didn't know much about it. And when I realized what the movie was about, still I felt like, you know, when we go to the movies these days, it's usually for the spectacle, the blockbuster, the big spooky stuff or action-packed stuff. I haven't gone to the movies in a very long time to just watch a drama. So this was different for me. Now, it did help that we went on, what they call it, National Movie Day or whatever. Yeah. Four dollars a ticket. Pretty good, and and discount popcorn and drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a good deal. Um, and we saw it. It was kind of nice. We saw it in a little more intimate theater setting. You know, recently we went and saw Oppenheimer on the giant 70 millimeter screen there at Hollywood. But this time we went to our local AMC and we went into one of their smaller uh, theaters that had some different types of seating, more comfy chairs, even have some like couches and things like that, a fireplace in the room. But yeah. That was interesting. But it was a little more intimate setting to see this movie in, which I thought was nice. Yeah, it was appropriate. They called it the movie lounge. Mm -hmm. And I'd never seen a movie in that setting before, at that theater before either. So, you know, it, it was an experience. And I'm, I'm really grateful we did it. Me too. Uh, that was actually my second time seeing a movie in the movie lounge. My first time was with a uh, giant group of 13-year-olds for one of my daughter's birthdays when we went to Bohemian Rhapsody. The nice thing was we filled the entire space, so when they were up dancing and singing, it wasn't too bad. But it was really nice to see something a, a little more dramatic and, and calmer uh, in that space. That sounds like a particular version of hell that uh, I, I managed to <laughs> avoid most of my life. Golda just... I, I was so fascinated and I wasn't sure how much of her life was going to be included. In fact, it's just really a, a short snippet of time while she was prime minister and, and during some of her other years serving in, in the Israeli government in various things. She herself is quite an interesting person. She was born in Kiev, Ukraine, mm -hmm. and at the end of the 19th century experienced the Russian pogroms and all of that. Her family immigrated and if it was 1906 to the United States and ended up settling in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is about as far from Ukraine as you can get there. Uh, you know, so she grew up mainly in America. She was actually the first, I found she was the first person in her family to graduate elementary school. Right. That's, you know, we talk about, oh, first to graduate high school or college, no, elementary school. So she really spanned quite a, a large transformational time period uh, in Europe and the United States. And then once she was grown, she became active in the search for an Israeli home country or home nation. Um, she moved to Palestine as it was then under the British mandate, uh, married her husband. They worked on a kibbutz, which is pretty much the purest form of socialism, if you will. And, you know, she did a lot in those early days to bring more Jewish people back to Palestine and to work against forces that were trying to prevent them to do so and continued to work really hard through the Second World War to bring as many Jewish people home and get them out of Europe where they were clearly not safe. Then to go on and be one of the first female leaders of a modern nation was pretty impressive. Uh, that was, you know, long, long, long before we even had a female vice president. They, they had a female prime minister, so I, I know a lot about her earlier life and her time with the formation of Israel. I did not know as much about her later life, so this was an interesting look at that. I knew nothing. Uh, I knew who she was because it's a cool name, like a newer name. I'd heard her name before. In terms of American history or world history, I suppose more appropriately, uh, when it comes to the fallout of World War II, I have a lot of gaps. It was not an area that I really cared all that much about when I was younger. Now now that I'm older, I'm fascinated by history, and I love history. So 
once I kind of got myself into that mindset, I was really excited about this movie. Like you said, it's a very small section of her life, a snapshot right around the Yom Kippur. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right around then, and it basically what led up to it during it and the fallout. And it's not a war movie, whereas it just takes place during the war. It's all her story and how she dealt with making the decisions that she made, some that some considered to be incorrect, some that turned out to be spot on. The the decision-making process and her as a person going through all of that, and it really humanized this person that I knew very little about. She's played by Helen Mirren, who I thought was fantastic. I'm, I'm sure there'll be at least a nomination, if not a, a bevy of awards for this one. I think so too. Mm-hmm. Now, I was a little confused when I first heard her speak. Because she sounded like Helen Mirren, doing an accent, but Helen Mirren. Fun. American accent. Golda Meir grew up in Milwaukee. Which I didn't know. So there were a few bits here and there historically I wish had been put in there for the people who didn't pay attention during the world history class. Just so that I could have been brought up to speed. But that's on me. That's not a failing of the movie at all. Well, and to be fair, most of what I know came from research projects that I sought out on my own or reading I did on my own. Not even from AP history. We didn't even deal with the Israeli uh, formation of a home state then, so mm-hmm. it's not surprising that you would not necessarily have a lot of knowledge about that. Um, most people don't, I think, but this it's an interesting movie, and it takes an interesting look at a point in time that set off a lot of the conflicts and allied relationships that we see now in the Middle East and in uh, Western Asia, in like Persia or Iran and Afghanistan and all of those places that the things that went on in the late 40s through the mid 60s in Israel Palestine created so many of these relationships that we see today and you even hear her talking about the Russians and their interference and interest there and her interesting take that she had been born in Ukraine and was used to having her father board the doors up on certain holidays, Christian holidays, so that they didn't get attacked in the pogroms. So she had that background. You know, she had been American. She had been one of the first Israelis, really a a woman of the world, if you will. And interestingly enough, one of the things they talk about in the movie, she gets referred to as being too socialist by some of the more warmongering folks. You know, she really, really believed in socialism and in people working together. I know one of the interesting things she did while uh, in the government of Israel was negotiate a lot of trades between Israel and up and coming countries in Africa. And so she's been called the mother of Africa because she helped bring a lot of food and produce and different things there and then initiate trade routes that the West was unwilling to do with or those un- countries. Or unable to. Or unable to. There is some, like you said, they talk about the Russians and there is some talk about what can America do to help, but if they get caught helping, it's going to set off something with the Russians or the Soviets. And I, I think I want to know a little bit more about her now. I mean, I do want to know more about her now just because I want to see more about the world picture what's going on. Like I said, it was a big blank spot for me when it comes to my knowledge of world history and world events. Everything that, that has to do with like Israel and Palestine and everything there, I, I am ignorant of. But again, I don't think that was a fault of the movie at all. Um, no. There was one review that I actually pulled up on my phone. I won't say it's a review. I, I'm, I'm sure it's a review from somewhere because it's got quotes on it, but I don't know who said it. I looked up the movie on Google and one of the results was, is Golda a good movie? And their response came up, Golda is workmanlike and well-produced, but is a sluggishly paced drama that isn't quite able to capture the tension of this grave historical episode. I disagree. I didn't think it was sluggishly paced at all. I had no problem with it. It was slower paced than, say, like a screen movie or even Oppenheimer or a superhero film or any of that stuff, or even Barbie. You know, it wasn't bang, 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 but it didn't need to be. And if it had been, I think it would have been a disservice to its subject matter. I think so. I think anyone that enjoys a good political drama movie will enjoy this. Mm -hmm. You mentioned potential award nominations, and I agree. 
especially Proline Schreiber, who played Kissinger. Yeah. What an unexpected casting, at least to me, and, and yet what an amazing job. I kind of hope he gets to play him again in something else because he did such a great job. But yeah, he really put on that, that skin of Henry Kissinger, and I guess because it's someone that I'm familiar with and you're familiar with. You know, we've seen the guy on the news when we were children and stuff. And so it's, it's a person we know, and to, to see him so well portrayed and very strongly portrayed, I, I thought. So I did have one problem with the film. Mm. There were a few times when the movie reminded me we were watching a movie, ah. uh, a reenactment, so to speak, because every once in a while, they would cut to real footage of Golda Meir doing something and then try to intercut it with footage of Helen Mirren as Golda Meir doing something. Yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of that either, but... While they did do some prosthetic makeup to Helen Mirren, even though she was a year older than Dora Meyer was <laughs> at the time that she's being portrayed in the film, um, she looks close enough to Dora Meyer, and they could have forced Gumpter into footage, or they could have created new footage. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like by going back and forth, yeah, it's kind of neat to see the historical footage and the newsreels and all that, but on the other hand, they are clearly two different people. And it did remind me for a moment that, wait a minute, we're not watching the real Golda, we're watching somebody pretend to be Golda. It broke the spell. It, it broke the spell just a little tiny bit. They didn't do that with Kissinger uh, at all. And it just felt like they didn't need to do that. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be my one complaint about the film. Yeah, that's fair. I thought the symbolism of like the birds was interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of cool. Not quite sure what it meant, but there are some cool bird things in it, and I felt like I might have gotten cancer from second in school. I was going to say, I, it has been so long since I've watched a movie with that much smoking in it. Oof. My goodness. I feel bad for Helen Mirren's lungs. Well, I'm hoping that she was actually using prop cigarettes, but, yeah, I, but if still, not, well. My goodness. My, my goodness, goodness. Yes. That was, um, it was a lot. And I'm sure some of it was CG'd, but still, holy cow. Although... According to an interview I saw with Golda Meir's grandson, highly accurate. She definitely chain smoked through everything. So it, I think yeah. it was, you know, true to uh, true to life in that respect. Where can people go and see Golda if they want to? It's not quite as widely uh, mm -hmm. available. So you brought it up as part of the four dollar deal, mm -hmm. but it's still playing in some places right now. I just went to Fandango to look up and see what was playing where. You had mentioned Golda, so I went and looked that one up in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an AMC that we went to, or was it a Regal? AMC. It's, one of the, it's one of the chains. So it's out there, mm -hmm. but I really appreciated the opportunity to go do it, because like I said, I hadn't gone to the theater to see a movie that wasn't a blockbuster or a tentpole or part of a big franchise. So it was nice to be reminded that going to the movies to see a drama is cool and and neat and exciting and we watched so many cool trailers oh there were so many trailers we watched some pretty cool trailers yeah. to some movies that i really want to see anatomy of the fall looks amazingly mm -hmm. cool i can't wait to see that one and then the one with samuel L. jackson and joe maga whatever plays dungeons and dragons a lot guy manganello yeah him <laughs> uh the, the topless werewolf from true blood yeah. i'm excited to see that movie as well so it was cool to see just some non-superhero stuff and I highly recommend people actually go see Goldeye. Mm -hmm. it, it may not be 100% historically accurate. I've seen some complaints about that online as well, but you know, it's it's Hollywood, it's a story, and it's a really interesting story inspired by true events. Well, and I think especially if anyone out there is, you know, with the times that we're living now, if you're struggling with, with the dichotomy of you want to support the idea of a Jewish homeland because that's important, but you also have altruistic, humanistic, or, or or socialist beliefs in, in helping your fellow men. Golda Meyer did an excellent job throughout her life of balancing the two, and I think seeing this movie will give people a, a taste of that. Well, we went to see a movie, and hopefully you'll go see one here soon, too. Mm -hmm. Let us know down below in the comments if you've seen Golda, and we'd love to hear what you think about it, or anything that you have to say about anything Team Death related. We'd love to hear about it. Also, if you have any other unexpected treasures of movies that you think we should go see, we're willing to seek them out and drive a little to find them. Uh, let us know in the comments below. One more thing. We mentioned Oppenheimer. I do have a review of Oppenheimer that we recorded. Mm -hmm. I've just never edited it and put it up. And I know it's kind of making its way out of theaters right now. 
but we did see it as a 70 millimeter release at the Hollywood Theater. We will go ahead and post that review here shortly. Stay tuned to this YouTube channel, which means you gotta subscribe and thumbs up and follow and whatever else that is YouTube wants you to do. Promise you firstborn son, make a hair offering. Hair offering? I, I don't You're know. You're gonna have trouble with that one. I, well, that's why I married somebody with hair.